to Magathea Builder Worlds. This is part two of a Patreon build. We're building the Northern Rock Bank. Yes, we are. Um, if you don't remember, this is part one. The Northern Rock. Uh, an XPS foam rock out outcrop upon which I'm going to build a bank for one of my patrons. Now, before we go anywhere else, before I get my teeth into this build, uh, I've got a confession to make and an apology or two. Confession one. Um, <laughs> last time, whilst building the Northern Rock, uh, I talked about the uh, Patreon competition that I ran and the fact that one of my patrons um, I won the competition by suggesting that I would build a, a bank for Burroughs and Badgers, which is a fantastic idea. And I'm really pleased with how the whole thing's coming out. It's a pretty deep, harsh kind of like vault going on inside this rock, but it's pretty neat. Um, that's all cool. <sighs> During the video, on a number of occasions, I named the patron who I'm building the model for. I named him Daniel. Um, uh, imagine my surprise then when a number of places when I posted the video of the Northern Rock build right um, last week or a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was, and then when you're watching this, um, uh, also on YouTube and on Facebook, said Patron did actually get very excited and make some comments about the model and how it was coming up. He also said to me that because I was making this model for him and he was so pleased with it so far, he would gladly call himself Daniel be my Daniel if I wanted him to be, even though his name is actually Alex. Um, so, yeah. Um, look, we'll just have to put that down to kind of like uh, grey hairs, old bloke, post-COVID, befuddled brain. I'll cock it up. So, first of all, if there are any Daniels out there who are patrons of mine who are thinking, oh, blimey, he's making me a model, even though I don't remember asking for a bank. Uh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not making you a model at all. I am actually making Alex a model of the Northern Rock Bank. So, apologies to Daniels and apologies to Alex. And from this point on, I will try and get Alex named properly in this video. Uh, however, if you use the name Daniel, you know that in Magathea Builder World speak, Daniel does actually equal Alex. Got it? Good. Right, let's move on. <sighs> right. <laughs> Grovely apology over. Here we go. So uh, the next stage of this build then, uh, is to build the building that's going to go on the top. Now, I, I haven't quite really um, got in my mind exactly what I want to do with this. I would like it to be a little whimsical. Um, I also like to make it so it's possible to have uh, different buildings on this here structure. You know, I quite like the idea of take bank mill building off, put watchtower on. I think that would be pretty cool. Although I'm not making a watchtower or anything else, another alternative building in this. You fucker, it always happens. It does. You know, I get on, I start videoing, people start pinging me, even though it's the middle of the pigging night. Right. Where was I? Oh, yes. I'm not intending on making another building to go on top of this. Well, not as part of the Patreon win, but uh, if Daniel slash Alex uh, wants me to build a different thing to go on top of it, he'll have to negotiate that with me, uh, you know, individually. Uh -huh. um, didn't know you could do that, did you? Well, you know, every now and then I can be approached to make people scenery, mm, even if, uh, you know, it's not for a Patreon competition win. Patreon competition, you say? What kind of competition is that? Oh, you know the deal. Go to patreon.com slash worlds. Become one of my patrons and then you can enter the competitions where several times a year I make a piece of scenery for the winner of the competition. Easy peasy. Anyway, what was I? Oh, yeah. Making a model. Now, um, I, I've got a number of things I need to do then. Like I said, I want this to be a whimsical build. Um, yeah, it's going to be anyway because it's a, kind of like a fantasy bank. So. First thing I need to do is cut myself a piece of hardboard that's going to go over the vault. Um, I didn't of course make it easy for myself by not having it as a rectangle but I'm going to cut that out first of all um, and then I'm going to work out what the actual rest of the building is going to look like. I am going to make the first floor of this building, uh, sorry the ground floor of this building because we're in the United Kingdom, um, first floor if you're across the pond or elsewhere, um, out of 10mm XPS foam. Good stuff this. You have seen me make models out of this before. If you haven't, then you have, clearly haven't seen the Red Wall Abbey build or the Stoke Park build or their build or various others. So if you haven't, that means you're not a subscriber of mine. Go subscribe. Go watch the other builds. Or oh, watch this, then go back and watch those anyway. Uh, I'm going to make 
yeah, walls out of this stuff, which will be pretty quick and enable me to detail the outside. And I want the ground floor of this building to be stone. Um, I'm either going to do it stone corners and then rendered walls or the whole thing stone. I'm going to use, um, for the front door at least, a Zelot Miniatures double door, like Zelot Miniatures doors I've used down below. Um, and I'm going to use some 3D printed windows um, that I printed previously. There you go. Lovely things. Um, and uh, because of the stupid corner I've got over here, it's not going to be a neat rectangle, which is fine. I'll have a bit off there and then a bit up there and on the... And that might give me my whimsy. Woohoo! Um, you'll be drunk for the end of this video. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, time to get on. So, first thing I need to do then, measure my space that I need to make the, make the base, cut the base out, and then start to work out how the walls are going to work. The walls, obviously, are going to have to be uh, more than two and a quarter inches. This is, what, five and a half centimetres tall. Um because that door's got to go into it. And anyway, I do want the ground floor to be big enough to take massive beasts, and this massive beast, which is a beaver, uh, by the time we get to the top of his weapon, is three inches tall. So the minimum height of the wall, of the ground floor of the bank, is going to be three inches. Um, but I'll do that in a minute. I've got to measure base first. Measure base, cut base. You don't need to see me cutting out MDF or, or hardboard. That's dull. Um, I'll see you in a minute. XPS. Uh, 10 mil insulation board. First thing I'm going to do to it then before we do anything else, because you can see it's got this kind of striations, straight striations, is to texture it. So I've got um, well, here's my board. Forgot that bit. Uh, there's the uh, baseboard. As you can see, this cut off corner is, means I'm going to have to have an odd shape building. Which is gonna lead land for lend itself well to the whimsy factor. Um, the uh, have a drink. Um, the ground floor then is gonna be a pretty much a straightforward stone brick kind of box. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do then is so I'm gonna make uh, my box first of all out of uh, three inch thick strips of. 10 mil XPS. Uh, the first thing I need to do to it is texture it. Then I decide what I'm going to do. So I'm doing it my normal method. One day I might get some kind of roller or something that's 3D printed. But piece of tin foil. Scrunch it up. Make it into a ball. Then we're going to roll it all over both sides of the XPS fume. Fume? Fume. We're gonna roll it all over the both sides of the XPS fume. Just realised in my jumper like this, it looked, uh, people could be worried that I've had a beard trim. No, nope, there it all is. <sighs> Fat Hobby Gandalf's beard is out to do the uh, uh, tin foil technique. Check this out. So, tin foil, XPS foam, coat. See the difference? Can we see the difference? We can see the difference. Look, you can just about see the difference there. Um, Well, really, all it does is it just gives a gets rid of those smooth striations, um, gets rid of the smooth feel of the foam, compresses it a little bit, changes the size of it a bit. Basically, means all I need then when I am <laughs> there you go again, you bastard. Um, how popular am I? Half past midnight or whatever the time. All it means is when I want to actually get around to painting this, it just needs sealing and then painting. It's got a cool texture of paint also. Um, I will of course put draw stones in. Although like I was saying, I think for this building I might not have all the stones visible. I might assume that a lot of it has been Rendered, I'll just have the cornerstones around the windows visible, I think. Well, anyway, doing this side, then I will turn it over and do the other side because, again, painting on the inside will be a lot easier with a textured wall. Let's 
see the difference? Textured. Smooth. Textured, smooth. That's quite a nice difference there. Look, check it out. Right, so I've cut my strips, look, look, strips of wool. I haven't drawn stones and stuff onto them, but I have on this one drawn around my door and around two windows, and I'm now going to take a scalpel and I'm going to cut these out. And uh, that way, there, I'm going to do it on the base of the model. The doors into the uh, vault, I haven't stuck in. I haven't decided how I'm going to do this. I think I'm probably going to stick this door permanently into this wall. I think. Go like that. Is that thing there? Pretty good. It's got a really nice stone surround. Anyway, that's kind of good. Um, and then I'm going to draw stone surround onto the two bits of the windows are cutting inside the line so I can get a more accurate size to the window that way there and they'll also squeeze into the stone probably help to hold it into place and then what's going to happen is I would probably just put a dab of Gorilla woodworking glue in there to hold those in place nothing else and my normal glues is just cool to melt this stuff so there we go wonky bloody cut but hold that in place there like that setting windows in a wall for B&B models is really difficult because of the size of the models um, the window seal on the inside is a bit wonky but because the, of course the thing is these little models wouldn't be able to see out where the big models can kind of thing so they're really massive pieces so they're difficult to see through these windows but really the windows are there to let light in or anything else so. Um, okay, that's that's uh, one. What I'll probably do is that this is the inside. And I'll probably cut uh, more away around there. So there's um, like arrow slits are on a castle wall, eh? or arrow archery windows are on a castle wall. Um, we're gonna go with this one as well. I'm not gonna do masses. I don't think of windows in the ground floor. The blank bank. I don't think it would really. <laughs> add to the security of the entire structure if it's full of windows and windows and windows um, just at the front of the back maybe the odd one I haven't decided to put another door in either I think there might only be one door in and I'm thinking that angled bit I might put a fireplace and have a chimney um, a chimney of whimsy oh dear here we go window going in All right. That then sits in there. Doorway sits in like that. Oh, not bad. And I'm going to do stonework up and probably across the top and around the windows. That's what I need to draw in next. And then work out how the rest of the door is going to work. So look, let's just get the model up here. I don't need the um, bottom bit of the. So there's my base. That's that wall cut to fit on that bit of base. Um, now I need to have a bit of wall back over here and a bit of wall back over here and a bit of wall going across the back uh, although I mean measuring was crap so this fourth bit of wall which is going to slot in there is actually a different height to the other bits Cusses, cusses, oh it's not too bad I don't know. we'll see, oh it's because it's, yeah yeah, oh nuts, anyway we'll see how we go that wall Draw on the details next. Let's do that. I also need to take this wall goes right the way up to the edge of the, the board base. So these two ends here are going to be the facing out walls, so they need texturing as well. Otherwise, they'll look smooth and everything else will be all textured, so that work crap. Okay. Right, okay, so I've got my walls all cut out for the outside. Uh, the bank. Well, it's the inside. There's the outside. Ta da! Drawn on the bricks work there. And then this wall here is going to go up the side here, like that. And then I've cut some angled bits. I need to draw the stonework 
textures out to draw stonework on the end there. That's going across there like that. And um, this one, going over here. Hopefully, I'm going to take a tiny little bit off the top of that. And then this bit is going to drop in here. Now, I have cut chamfered. I've cut the angles here, mitered, I think the term is, uh, to mostly fit these bits but I am going to have to do a bit jiggery pokery to get all that to fit in and then what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to fill the gaps using roll some up what the making hell did I do with it oh for god's sake I'll try to use some white milli but I've also I didn't cut this window very well so stuck it with super glue but there's gap around the outside so I'm going to run a little bit of milli putt around that as well just to block that in so there's no gap um, then I'm going to put a bit inside because um, I want to have a portcullis on the inside where the start top of the stairs goes. <laughs> I'm not very clever. I'm going to be very clever because over here, over here is the model. Here is the stairs. Here. Here's where the staircase should be. Here is a window. Uh, immediately where the staircase is, which is rubbish. This one. Uh, although I think I'm going to make this now into a chamber so there'll be a light in there. And I might put some kind of metal doorway or something over there. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, inside, anyway, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have a chamber with a portcullis into it to get to the stairs. I like the idea of having a another door that the the bank robbers have got to go through. Although I might not use one this wide, which is almost big enough to get the biggest figures through, I'll make it a bit of a squeeze. Now in some versions of the rules, and um, it suggests that if your bases are big enough to go through the, the, the gap, you can't do that. But then, the way my mind works is that that means that it's a really weird world, the Barrows of Badge as well, because you need doors of all kinds of different sizes. So in my games, I would have it, if your base doesn't clearly pass through the doorway, then it counts as difficult ground and will slow you down. You have to make a... There we go, look. There's tonight's first biddy biddy doop doop. Um, yeah, so I, I think you, a large beast or a massive beast can fit for a small door. They just have to slow right down. They have to make a difficult terrain move. Otherwise, making models for this game is almost bloody impossible because actually a 50 millimeter base is a really really big model base and will preclude a large part of the game of the models in the game um, actually fitting into a lot of the terrain which rather defeats the object of me making the terrain in the first place so uh, that is where a rule has to give way to, I think, sensibleness and stuff. It's tricky enough that I'm trying to make whimsical models here without worrying about how big the door is to fit particular beasts. It's the same with like the spiral staircase in there. It's really tight. I'd let really, really big beasts go down it. I'll just make them go down it really slow because they're kind of like squeezing into the space. Look while I'm doing that, I'm sticking that milli putt in that gap. I have to add a little bit of water to something just to smooth it down, but I don't want the window falling out. That would be silly. Silly it would be. Right. Nearly done with that. So I'm going to wield um, what's it called? Gorilla woodworking glue. Stick all my bits of wall together. Stick in the inner section with a smaller portcullis type thing. Uh, the floor then will need tiling, paving slabs put into it using the same method that I use in other places which is Cut out cardboard paving slabs, and then we're going to get on with the first floor of the model. And that uh, is going to be interesting. No idea what that's going to look like right now, but here we go. 
<laughs> nearly, nearly there. A bit of melee part. I've never done this before. I'm never worried about it, but because this is a model for Alex, not Daniel, I'm going that extra mile to make up for the uh, identity, mistaken identity, I think. <laughs> or not, as the case may be. I'm sure he's not bored. I'm not. Right. Put a glue on a little while ago, it's starting to go off. So I'm going to stick the wall on and to help me out holding the whole thing together as per often or as usual uh, if I can find some there we go I'm going to use some flat headed dressmakers pins just to pin everything in place stick the uh, walls down hang on let's do that like that so stick the walls down Stick that onto the base, good flush. Lovely. Um, stick in this side wall. I'm actually going to run a bead of glue along the, the wall bit there. Otherwise, I ain't going to join. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Stick that on because I let the glue go off already. Sticking really well to the base straight away. But even so, to give the whole joint more rigidity, because it's not really a joint at all, it's just two bits of polystyrene going flush up against each other. And I'm going to go through one of the carved bits of stone. And for another curl bit of stone and lower down. And I'll hold those two bits of wall section together. <laughs> it's bouncing around now. Okay. Stick, 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 you little beggar. Okay. Uh, this back wall section. Bead of glue down there. Oh. There we go. Zoop. Do exactly the same. Stick that on. The glue starts to grip. It's quite cool. Especially where you've textured some of the end of the walls. It seems to make a better fix. Pins in there to hold that in place. Lots of bloody pins on. Uh, come out nicely. <coughs> Thank you so much for his message you made. Eleven o'clock and all. Um stick it down there, okay. It's amazing how you measure all these things and you think you've measured it beautifully and it was all gonna fit. And your base is still a bit too big in one place or another. It's really, really annoying. Um a bit of wall there. Which is a fraction too high, which is really, really annoying. Bit of judicious trimming, that worked alright. No glue on the end though. Pins. <laughs> yeah, and as I've done, done everything by eye, my mitered wall ends aren't 100% accurate, so they almost certainly are going to require some filling. I think. 
Just get a pin in place there. Stick that down there. And a pin there. I'm sure if you made it with individual bricks, it would be better. I'm sure you could make it exactly the way you wanted it. I'm sure also I will not get anywhere near as many videos produced as I actually do do, which isn't enough anyway to keep my viewing hungry, hungry viewers satisfied. Ah, oh, feed the ravens. And all that kind of thing. Right, okay. One last wall section going over here then. I'm guessing that actually is going to be a little bit just a smidge too big. Well, it also is not. What's going in there? What's going in there? Well, it's not bad. Um, what I could really do doing is uh, drawing some stonework on it to match. Then I want to fill the gaps down the inside of the middle part. Doo -doo. Um, head on the outside. All right, there is the ground floor, mostly stuck together, pinned together. Gaps here and here. I'm going to fill that with some milliput, but not till the glue's dry. So milliput that tomorrow down the gaps there. So it's kind of cool. On the inside, um, I made a little cute little ickle chimney. Look, I'm going to put a chimney on this side like that. Isn't that cute? Uh, well, I need the chimneys down too tall. And I'm going to probably put a matching bit of chimney breast on the outside. So there's a chimney goes up the outside of the building I think you know I mean it's a bank it's got it's got to keep your clocks warm in the winter time otherwise it'd be bloody miserable wouldn't it eh? uh, then I've also yeah so we're gonna have a fireplace there like that crackle 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 that'll be a nice little feature um I don't know if that adds to whimsy it's not whimsical is it really so a fireplace in the bank I suppose not well you know I mean I'll cut out this wall to go in here kind of um, to take this portcullis and that's going to sit in there like that and that'll be the portcullis down to the um, staircase which means I think got a bit of wall over here which is going to sit in there solid wall like that and that gives us an interesting shape for the rest of the building um, I don't know where we're going to have the tellers, probably across there. I might have a counter or some description there. Um, again, you want to be really careful when you're doing this kind of model to not overfill it with details in the inside. A temptation for me all the time with this kind of thing is go, right, okay. I want a bank counter and I want pot plants and I want all kinds of other cack. Problem with that is the fact that. You know, um, he just gets in the way when you're playing a game, so um, yeah, that's gonna go in there. I think I'm just gonna paint that bit of the floor, the corner there, black because that's over the, the stairs. I was gonna cut it out. Um, problem with that is that if you use this model elsewhere on a table, and that's part of the idea, is uh, Alex is gonna be able to pick this up and put it down on the tabletop sometimes when he doesn't want to have the whole Northern Rock thing going, then you've got a flipping great big hole in the floor. So from that point of view, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to paint, paint it black and show that's where the staircase goes. Because um, it's a novel thought like that. So glue on uh, here, on the base, on the base there, on the wall there. Like that. Tink, 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 tink. That's going to go over there, so glue along that, that and that. Um, and actually I've got to put the ground floor to one side to dry. Because there it is. That is one of the advantages of working with XPS like that. By the time you've done the texturing of the foam, 
Um, it's just a fraction too tall. I'm going to slice a little slew off the top of that. When you've done the, fra the, the texturing of the, the, the stone outside, and you've got all in one place, it's all. Oops, didn't notice we pulled that bit of wall out there, did you? No, no, it's not even a blooper. Not even worthy of a blooper. It does feel like you make this kind of building pretty damn quick, actually. Um, because it is pretty much going together quite quickly. So. Pin through the wall there. I might take these pins out at the end, just to help hold it in place while it glues. Pin through the wall there. I've done it again, for God's sake. I could almost do with a pin through there, couldn't I really? I know that door's going to fit in there. I know the port, the big solid wooden door's going to fit in there in the front. I know that I can offer this up in a moment to the Northern Rock. We can see where we're at. Let's put a couple of pins in there, otherwise this is going to get on my wick every time I move it. Okay. Apologies to those of you who are watching this who were actually affected by the Northern Rock all those years ago. Um, for those of you who don't get the joke, uh, Google it. <laughs> Anybody like my friend Edward who was actually affected by the Northern Rock going down all those years ago? Many apologies for opening up old wounds. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, here we go. So, I haven't stuck my chimney on it. <clears throat> Two minds about that, but maybe I'll well do. Place my doorway in there. So, on the next mission, it's not quite, but uh, fairly early on, is going to be to put cardboard tiles in the floor. This model. Bring the old rock up here. Bing! Sitting on there nicely. And I was going to change the angle to dangle the camera. We are, look. Bank starting to take shape on Northern Rock. Uh, the back angle, that's quite interesting. It copes with the rock there. Looking kind of whimsical. Not hugely, hugely whimsical yet. Uh, I think it's going to need some overhanging parts and some preposterous bits of building, I think, to make it a bit more daft and whimsical. I think the first floor is going to need to be bigger, sticking out more, uh, with like balconies or bits hanging off. That'd be cool. Where the uh, manager has his office. How the hell we get up there? I don't know. Um, I could, I suppose, put some more stairs in. There's a set of stairs there. That we could go. But I've got a bloody window over there. Oh, every. Oh, everywhere where I could have stairs, I put a sodding window. Oh, I suppose I could just uh, pretend that the spiral stairs go up into the upstairs as well. Sometimes you just can't have it always. And if I have, if I put more stairs in, I just can't get it all in the model. So I'm just might assume this is just the main stairwell that goes up to the uh, offices or whatever up above as well. So. That's the ground floor done stuck. I'm quite happy with that. Look, there it is. Fits on there nice. Good stuff. Um, now I need to think about first floor. What well, I'm going to make the first floor from. Hmm? And, uh, I don't know. And, uh, walls and, and stuff. I wonder. I could break out the phone call, I suppose. Um, or I could do it all in XPS phone. Mmm, agony. Thoughts, thoughts. I'll come back to that in a minute. When we first, the ground floor is gluing nicely. It's making good progress. Um, I, like I said, I've got to <coughs> tile the inside. But it's an alright kind of size building this, I suppose. Not too bad. Um, I'm now agonising over what I'm going to do on the first floor and what it should look like. I haven't done any drawings for this model at all, so from no point of view. Uh, what I've done so far is I've dived into the balsa wood collection store and I've taken some, I think it's about three millimetre balsa wood and um, cut it to 
however long that is, eight inches. This is the stuff that's about four inches wide, so. Taking an eight inch piece and another eight inch piece, which just about goes the length of the model, sticks out a little bit, which is fine. And then I'm gonna have this, I think I overhang. That way doing it with balsa, um, I, uh, I've got floorboards, which is nice, and they're the right kind of thickness. So, um, I'm kind of wondering how well I'm going to do here. I could just build an entire first floor. Um, but I also quite like the idea of this end with the, the wonky wall. Um being open, having a bit of a kind of balcony outside. So this kind of bit over here, building, this bit over here, balcony. The nice thing about that then is it means you can get action going on, whoop, ping, <laughs> on top of the model um, without having to get inside, which is quite good uh, by the time it's up on the rock. He says bringing the model in. There's that. It's quite a long way up, but it'll be quite cool for, you know. Proclamations to be made out across the town. Somebody standing on the back and shouting, oh, great place for a crossbowman. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm struggling with the ideas of how to make this a more ugh, whimsical, there we go, build. Uh, yeah, I really don't know. Or I could put a round part of the building. I could have balsa balconies that are supported from underneath that are permanently attached to the outside of the building and then have a building there. That might be quite cool. I could possibly do that round. Two sides like that kind of thing. I am actually kind of struggling with ideas in a minute. Um, yeah. I'm going to watch some more Game of Thrones and see what I can come up with. Right, well, I think I made the odd decision. <laughs> I don't know, though. I have cut a piece of 10mm. Um, uh, what's this stuff called? Oh, yeah, XPS foam. Uh, that now fits the top of the bit of the bank. I am then going to take some of this uh, eight millimeter section square balsa and I'm going to put it right around the top of the uh, most of, or probably all of, uh, the the wall. Cause what that's going to do is support a wooden walkway that's going to go around most of the wall. That will sit higher than the wall. That will then hold the roof bit in place. Um, so the models can move around the outside of the first floor of the building, which I think will look kind of cool. Um, so that will add to the, the playability of it, will be our figures on the outside. I might start adding to the whimsy level as well. So that's what I'm going to do first of all. I'm going to make stick on these bits, which are going to support, uh, help to support the, uh, the walkways. Uh, and there'll be some uh, balsa cut joist uprights as well. So, it's really cool. I'll go to town with this model. We can see it's XPS foam and now it's boxer wood, which is quite neat. Uh, we'll stick all that on, and then I'm going to see with the, what the actual structure's going to look like. But then it will have walkways all around the outside. The course, again, we're back to that problem with BNB, much as I love boroughs and badges, is the fact that base sizes of figures are problematic. Massive beasts like this beaver, there he is, has got a 50mm base, which is bloody enormous. If I make the bar the all oh, the walkways around the outside 50 millimeters, two inches wide, that's quite big. The problem with that is if you don't, if you go to, I mean, this is a medium beast, this is a uh, tunnel jack, sewer jack, uh, hound, this on a 40, he's a large beast. 40 might do it. Well, I might end up still just making it big enough to accommodate the 30 millimeter figures. Figures on 30mm base. Um, 
and then there'll be room for bases to overhang on a lot of it because it'll have kind of like handrail and balcony bits and bits and pieces there. oh I don't know um, I'm going to give it a go but sticking these bits on first of all that, that's the, the key first of all so let's do that do you really need to see me cut a box of wood? Oh, I don't think so I'm going to cut it up stick it on we'll see where we're at well every now and then I get pleasure out of the fact that my work collides with my hobby um, today uh, during the day when I couldn't be working on this which is coming on nicely I've got some ideas about that uh, I had to do some stuff with this stuff anyway uh, many of you know that I am a pirate <laughs> this summer as last summer I will be doing a whole bunch of pirate events during the heritage <laughs> not like that though because I didn't do that but um, yeah I am a pirate five part of it starting uh the late may bank holiday and uh although some of it is a bit kind of panto because it's arena shows and it's silly we try and get as much as it right as we possibly can and today i've been making stamps oh look at that that actually shows the right way around when it's on a screen back to front like that this is a stamp of the east india company um and this is a stamp of the dutch east india company which I'm going to be using to mark up cargo and bits and pieces. These all little details that I really like in world building. It's kind of cool. Building worlds to entertain people this summer with English heritage. And I'm building worlds to put on the tabletop. It's not all bad. Uh -huh. Right, anyway. Where was I? Oh, yes. I'll tell you where I was. I was uh, about to start work on the first floor. That's the uh, second floor for you uh, colonial types. Not the bank. Now, so here's the first floor. Actually, let's get the Northern Rock up here. Sits up there like that. Very good. Happy with that. On the vault. Now, I've said, I think earlier, I was struggling with ways of making this model whimsical. Whimsy! Because it's quite solid and. Yeah, solid, I think is the word. And I talked about wooden platforms and towers, and I am definitely going to do wooden platforms around the outside of this, around here, because um, then I can have figures on the outside. But then I've also decided that I am going to use this polystyrene bit that I cut out as roof that's going on there like that, because what is more solid for a bank than a solid stone structure? This end over here, this is still going to be an open balcony, I think. Um, this end, however is going to be solid crenellated kind of like block on top to where the bank manager will be or the whoever but uh, um, it's going to be a solid solid building impenetrable but also that way there Daniel gets double bubble because if he doesn't go with the bank theme You'll be able to use it as a guardhouse or watch house or a little fortress or some kind or another. So that is my plan. Gonna build another level of XPS foam on here. It's gonna have crenellations on the top. And then a, a path, a path. Oh, split level effect. Balcony out here. Gonna look quite neat. First thing first though, I'm gonna make some wooden platforms to go around, certainly around out here, around so they overhang the edge of the cliff. Which would be kind of cool. Yeah, right, let's do that. Get rid of the rock for a minute. Over there. Get rid of that bit. Need. Here we go. That's about three millimetre thick. Three mil? Yeah, possibly. What's it say? 2.5. Now it's half a millimetre out. 2.5 mil thick polystyrene. And I'll make some wooden platforms that stick out the side. They're going to be supporting with wooden joists. Nice. At least out that side there and around here. And then maybe around this corner, that would be kind of cool. Don't necessarily have to go all the way around the build building, but yeah, right. Okay. Measure, cut, score wooden planks. This segment of the video is going to be interrupted by one dog snoring and every now and then me telling. Chewy, no, uh, because um, poor old boy had his knackers off yesterday. He's feeling very sorry for himself. He's not allowed to lick his bits, but he's not getting on with the cone of shame. Um, 
we could almost have a pup date, but there's not much pup date to have, really. They're all asleep. Well, you could probably hear Ahsoka. Ha, ha, ha. Anyhow, where were we? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so here we are. Look, I've put, now put a wooden platform around most of uh, the ground floor of the bank. Uh, done in balsa wood. I haven't cut, <laughs> very remiss of me, I haven't cut planks in the bottom side. Doesn't really matter too much. But it is all supported with little wooden supports all the way around, which is kind of cute. Um, and uh, like I said, I've decided I'm going to build a, Kind of stone first floor. I probably haven't thinking it's too much. That's the bit of phone call. Oh, phone call. This is a bit of XPS I cut out um, to fit in that space. So outside, we're still going to have stone over this end here. Um, and inconveniently, it's now, of course, a different height to the wooden platform, so that's fine. And then this bit is going to be the tower. And then, yeah, I've, I've probably overthought this too much and I ended up cutting beams in and all kinds of malarkey, which I really, really didn't need to do. Uh, now I'm going to put wooden floors across those bits here. This bit I'm leaving open. Um, the stairwell down into the vault is below that. And what I'm actually... <coughs> What I'm going to do with this bit is just leave it open and I'm not putting stairs in there because it will just fill up the whole thing and it'll be silly. I mean, I could, I mean, it would be kind of cool. Um, but uh, it's not really, really necessary. So I'm, I'm not going to put any stairs in there and I'm not even going to cut out that hole at the bottom uh, which would go down to uh, the vault because if uh, Daniel slash, slash Alex um, wants to use this as a separate building and not putting it on Northern Rocky can, there won't be a great big hole in the floor. Um, so this is where we're at, Whoop. Um, wooden floorboards here, then I'm going to build the wall, I've already cut out some more 3 inch XPS and I textured it, I decided I'm going to put a couple of windows in there and obviously there needs to be a door out onto the, um, uh, the, the main part of the stone here um, and then it will need a roof which I'm going to crenellate. The nice thing about working with this stuff um, and texturing the way I have is the fact that it's pretty quick to build with, which means actually this is very well. If I hadn't made it overly complicated by fancy schmancy bits of woodwork and <coughs> totally unnecessary XPS foam beams, um, it will be quite a quick build. But I'm, I'm, I've got the house to myself and me and the dogs and. Um, it's the middle of the day and I'm not working because it's Saturday, so I'm taking time, having a lovely time of playing around with food. Uh, it's all good. Later on, I might get me um, uh, stamps out because it's the following day and stamp some Hessian sacks or something for pirate land. But in the meantime, back to Balsa Wood and drawing in planks to put them into the model. Yes, indeed. Okay, let's do that. All right, so there's my floor stuck on. I hope you're getting this. This now goes on here, like that. Saucy, can't see that, can you? Oh, let's zoom out. I'm going to get loads of my kitchen now. So that's now on there. Now I could put my water on the outside. It's going to look quite neat, this actually. I quite like this. Um, I don't know whether building it all stone is going to affect the whimsy of it um, it might not be quite a twisty turn enough whimsical but then um, I've kind of started to come up with a definition for whimsy um, I think from a gaming point of view from my point of view and that is um, well, probably the else it means that in this next section you're going to get hanging there you, you know, some of you are going to get really drunk um, whimsy then is I think Anything, any idea in a fantasy game that is just stupid and will never happen. So the entire premise of Burrows and Badgers is whimsical. There have been conversations recently about changing the rules and Michael Lovejoy writing a second 
it is and I get to bang on about how inaccurate all the um, weapon rules are because they're not historically accurate and then you sit there and go well, yeah but the whole game is about mice and badges and squirrels so it doesn't really matter whether Calibre shoots fast or is accurate or not really because um, it's all whimsy Tim and you're like oh yeah that's true so uh, the fact that this is a, a stone building with a, a daft wooden platform right around the outside which let's face it is there mostly to put little toy soldiers on it's not from an archaeological architectural point of view um, and it's got a nice little platform right there and, and it's going to have a crenellated roof and that's all a bank that is whimsical isn't it is that whimsical I don't know if you think it's whimsical well, make a comment down below if you don't think there's enough whimsy in it then um, yeah you kind of like um, yeah make a comment about that down below as well and if you are playing the whimsy drinking game that's five whims six whimsies in about 30 seconds I apologise to you livers. Right, what's next then? Well, apart from a soaker snoring, uh, next is take my three inch wall sections, measure them out, I'm going to have to make a couple more I think, decide where the windows are going to go, decide where the damn chimney's going, if I'm keeping the chimney from downstairs, which I now think is going to go on this wall over here, it can't go on this wall because this is no, it's no longer a wall, Although it could go, but that would look silly. So I'm going to have a chimney here, I think. Um, and, um, yeah, make this first floor. Let's do it. It looks kind of neat. Look, there's stonework around there. And there's wooden platforms and, and stuff. Do I put another wooden platform across there? I mean, the logical thing would be to have another wooden platform across there, but where would the fun in that be? Um, so, you know, no. asymmetrical and a bit odd. And, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, go whimsy. Woo! This is how far I've got now. Look, this, working with the XPS phone like this is actually a piece of cake. Um, you get really good results with it. Um, there's my stairwell. I've got an open door. Can we see in there? Hang on. Just through that, look through that door. You can see an open door all the way back here. Um, that's the stairwell. I, I, I'm, I want to get it done. If I was making this for me, I might even put another spiral staircase in there but it doesn't need to be there at all so from that point of view um, I've cut three windows in and put a door in here I wanted it to be pretty solid and have this brickwork around it because this is a bank it's a solid building and also if not if it doubles up as a watchtower um, it, again it's a really solid building this now looks something like this check it out um, I haven't decided what's going to go around I've got to have some kind of handrails uh, around the the wooden walking platform, which is pretty, going to be a bit fiddly, but this will be pretty straightforward. I've now cut a lid to go on top of the blockhouse, um, and that's going to be crenellated. I'm going to sink a, uh, uh, I think I think that's a, actually a terrain crate trapdoor, I think. I'm going to sink that into the top of the stairwell, so there's not full on staircase going up there, but you can certainly get onto the roof. Um, uh, I'm also going to texture this and I'm going to do stonework on that and then what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the roof the crenellation, the crenels, the crenellated bit hanging down over the um, floor so it will actually hold the um, the roof on plate on, on the top now I could cut individual crenellations in uh, or I might just leave it a flat wall all the way around. If I cut individual crenellations in, then that'll make it look really, really faulty. And in some ways, it doesn't need to be really, really faulty. It needs to be just kind of like a, a brick wall around the top. Um, but uh, who knows? Alternatively, I could make another layer, or I could put a roof on here, some kind of description. That might add to the whimsy. Woo! Have a drink. Um, uh, we'll see how we go. But I'm thinking first of all, I'm going to have a go at doing these walls around the outside. Texture that. Uh, that's looking good. Now, let's just zoom out a little bit more. Uh, and stare at the wonders of my kitchen. Uh, there we go. Um, because now we put this big boy on the rock. Now it's really starting to take place. This is quite a considerable build. Um, actually, from a build, Magnetia Builder of Worlds point of view, it's about as tall as it's supposed to get. So from that point of view, um, yeah, might not get a roof. 12 by 12 by 12 are the rules. 
Um, he's twirled that way, and he's twirled that way, and he's very, very nearly twirled that way. So, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to look really great. So I'm going to do some fiddly diddly handrails. Um, we'll have a look at doing those in a Good moment. Up. Right, here we go. So now I have uh -huh, pretty much made the bank. I've still got to do handrails around this wooden platform. Um, this is quite a, a building. It's quite a substantial building, which of course, actually, you want your bank to be. You want it to be a fairly substantial building, don't you? Really, you don't want it to be a kind of what's the easy to break into place. So I've now got a lid, which I made so um, you can see cut. I've cut this so it overhangs. It looks quite nice. Sits with the the trapdoor over the top of the uh, uh, foot stairwell. Uh, that sits on quite nicely, that ain't going to come off by accident now. Uh, this then sits on here, um, so now this model is in like four pieces. And yeah, I, when I started off making this model, I was saying, oh, it's going to be really versatile. Um, Daniel slash Alex uh, will be able to, you know, change the model on the top of the rock and it'll be able to be something else. Well, to be quite honest, fucker, you haven't done it again yet again. Oh. Quite honest, uh, the way I've gone about building this bank, it could easily be a watchtower. Anyway, check it out, it's kind of neat, I like it. Um, solid. Northern Rock Bank is going to be a difficult place to break into, my friends. Uh, which obviously is part of the point of it being a bank, so from that point of view. Um, <sighs> that'd better be a conversation about gunpowder. So I've got to, yeah, I've just got to do the wooden hand handrails around here. And then the actual construction of the building is done. Oh, I'm probably also going to put some cardboard um, capping tiles on the top of the tower. I mean, I, I made these sticky up bits because they kind of look cool. Uh, they are, of course, at risk of getting broken straight away. Um, but, uh, yeah, hey. Then that'll be up to somebody else to stick it back together. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to cut out some cardboard capping tiles, I think, to go all the way around there. That'll look quite neat. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the model on the whole is, is, is pretty much done. Uh, I've just got to figure out these handrails. Yeah, be I'm going to focus just on the handrails. Uh, uh, the other week I was at a boot fair and I picked up a load of cheapy spindles from um, of, uh, doll's houses. So I've got to have to sacrifice these. I'm going to use this top section with the knobbly bit on as the uprights for my handrails I'm going to super glue, glue those on and then I'm going to cut some 3mm wooden handrails and uh, we're job done so it shouldn't take very long um, very effective way of doing it uh, right there's my handrail going all the way around the outside I like that it's such quite a nice solid structure this Good solid shape. I could have done getting paint figures out really, but there's a large beast 40mm based tunnel jack, and there's a 30mm base mole. <laughs> the smaller creature's not so much a handrail as a forehead rail, but you know, I know. Um, sitting on the top as well. Yeah, that's cool. So, jobs left to do. Uh, I need to <sighs> take my cereal box cable, cut out paving stones to go inside the ground floor of the bank because I haven't done that. I opened up the bank a little while ago and went, oh, bum, I haven't done that. And then the next job, wield the Mod Podge. Yes. Uh, and basically, inside and out, cut paint all of the XPS foam with Mod Podge. Oh, I'll do the tiles on top. But paint all the XPS foam with Mod Podge. And then it's uh, leave that to dry, go off, and uh, that, cause I can seal that and paint it. Construction pretty much finished. Well pleased. I'm hoping you're liking this, Alex, because uh, it looks kind of saucy. All the dogs are being very well behaved. I don't even know where Chewy is. He's on the sofa. Chewy, leave it. Good boy. Leave your bits alone, fella.
Play for stones. Mod Podge now. Let's go find a brush. There's the Mod Podge. Okay, there it is. Black and undercoated. It looks kind of squat because it's so wide, but you got to make these models big because Mr. Lovejoy does his system making 50 millimeter bases on his models, so uh, it's looking pretty cool. So all we need now is a uh, paint job. Oh, and I haven't made the, the vault bit downstairs. So three sections, uh, top, middle, bottom, needs paint. Now, color schemes is the next thing. Um, Normally I'd, I'd be lazy and just paint grey stuff, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint the corner bits grey. I think um, I was tempted to do, do a different colour, but most of the stone that this, this is built on is obviously grey. So, but I think then the actual uh, flat bits, the plaster bits, are going to be kind of like lime washed or whatever. So I'd obviously it will be a really dull, dull kind of model. So from that point of view. I don't want to be too imposing. It's a bank after all. Um, so I need to find some paints and get on with the paint job and see how we go. We're nearly there. Look, I've finished the actual making of it. Just got to do the bit that we all know how much I love. Yay, let's get on. So here we are in the painting process. Half painted bit. Semi painted bit. Three quarters painted bit. It's at this point Every time I paint a bloody model like this, that I tend to regret the fact that all of my models come apart. Because just between you and me, and I might have said this before, the painting bit is not the bit that really kind of flows about the building it, the making of it is the cool thing. Um, and I, yeah, yeah, I really like seeing the whole painting thing finished on the table. I really, really do, and that's great too, but oh God, this is so much to paint. And now I've painted most of the outside. <laughs> outside, outside, there we go, the outside. I've even painted some wood in there. I've still got to paint the bloody walls in there. I've still got to paint the bloody walls in here. <sighs> I haven't had a chance to paint any actual Bay and B figures for ages. So, um, anyway, getting on, nearly there. Hooray! Um, yeah, I am sat again in the kitchen. Dogs around me. I'm watching the Norseman. Actually, uh, not the Norse man. Norse men. You know the the funny one on Netflix. Watch it if you haven't seen it. If you're into Vikings and you've never seen Norse men, watch it. Hilarious. Um, it's the only thing keeping me smiling for this bloody paint job. See you in a minute. <laughs> Okay, I'm back in the workshop for the last time on this model. Uh, we got this far. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Nearly done. <coughs> um, I'm literally just finishing some details. Uh, that door is going in front, which is fine. That fits nicely. I made it just so that... You can't see. I made it just so it's possible to uh, push the doors in and out. In fact, if I'm feeling generous, I've got time. Not before this video gets finished, but um, for the client, because I like him. Because <laughs> I feel bad because he's got his name on. Sorry, Jemima. Um, uh, Danny, Dan, Dan, Danielle, Dan, Alex. Um, what I might do. He said, diving into his box where he's got all of his Zelda miniatures things. So I thought what I might be able to do is put an empty open archway with nothing in it. But I haven't got one. Right, okay, scrub that idea. Fuck that. <laughs> that was going to be a really nice gesture. Nice kind of generous kind of. Here you go, have this. I don't know. I got any. Well, that can't be right. Hang on. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to just go digging through the cack really quickly. Um, just on the off chance that I've got one kicking around. This is not much of a digging through the cack, because, um, you know, I haven't really had to go digging through the cack for this, this model, on the whole. Oh, but it, digging through the cack has worked, everybody. Result, relax. We're all happy now. Digging through the cack has come off once more. For now, for now. And uh, what I'm looking for, because they're like miniatures make some really cool stuff, right? They, they make this archway, okay, arch door like this. Well, I'm just getting out of the model. They make this arch door like that, right, which is really cool. They also make um, an arched 
Paul Cullis, like that. Ah, look, that's really cool. Not that that's going on this model. Um, and then they also make an Opal one. Like that, which is the same Archer. I mean, in fairness to them, it's dead clever, because, you know, they can make three things really easy. But it's the same thing as the door. Well, it's got Paul Cullis bits in it, but I might cut out the Paul Cullis bits at the top. And then uh, Alex can have one of these as well. So when the doors of the bank are open, they can just have an open space like that. That look cool. Um, I could even do that for the other bits and all of Look, look, there's an open doorway like that. Uh, uh, uh. So when the door up here at the top. Bing! He's open. You could remove it and put that in there, you know. Or, because I'm super generous like that, it might just get used in dungeons. I don't know. Um, anyway, I've got to finish painting this door here, and I'm going to finish painting this portcullis to go the in the ground floor of the building, um, at the top of the stairwell. And... I'm going to finish, I'm going to make um, the bit for the vault that I didn't make last time. What's that? He said. Oh yeah, the, the metal grill, the, the big metal kind of like, the, the vault bit really, I suppose. Oops. Uh, I'm going to use a bolter. And I'm going to use this little baggie of um, Spindles, Dolls House Spindles. I think, because it's a bank, right, and we all know what banks are like, are taking our money, they could easily afford uh, to have flash kind of spindly raw iron kind of bars in their vault rather than just kind of straight up, straight down bars. So I'm going to have these really cool, nicely made raw iron. Well, they're not raw iron in a minute. They would look... Um, but I'm going to sink them into the bolster and then I'm going to cut that out and then that'll be like a really kind of, kind of cool entrance to the vault uh nice big kind of metal bars downstairs to stop anybody just kind of like walking in and walking out with all the goodies um uh, yeah that's what we got left to do so just a little bit more painting uh it's not weathered it's quite nice i mean it's quite a nice kind of color i've deliberately left it like this i don't know what the rest of alex's table looks like so it's kind of a bit brighter than I would normally go for necessarily. It's not that grim dark. Although quite a lot of my London models are, are quite bright. Um, but I haven't weathered it. It could do with like a sepia wash and various other things. But do you know what? I'm going to leave that to you, Alex, because you can then make it work with the rest of your table. Um, so uh, it's given, I've given it a basic paint job, which works all the way around. Uh, we'll have a proper look in a minute when I finish the doors. Stop gabbling at the camera, Tim, because this video is probably long enough already, you know, like they normally are. Shut up, man, and get painting. Good idea. Let's finish the paint job. Woohoo! Well, that took flipping ages, but here we go. Ba -na 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 -na. Metal bars, metal bars. Now, what I haven't done, and it's still super glue in there, um, is uh, um, put anything in the middle here, right? There's no gateway in the middle here. I might make a little thing I could pop in and pop out, or I might just leave it completely open. So, uh, you know, just have to abstract that. But this now needs painting, and I made it like this on a, a balsa base like that, purely apart from anything else, so it could be put in um, and taken out if required. So this now is will basically just sit inside the bottom of the vault, uh, split the room in half, uh, provide a big kind of like metal kind of like vault kind of thing on one end oh. uh, and then at the other end um, it's where the staircases and stuff like that so I'm going to paint that up this is all going to be metal here and then wood across the top wood across the bottom happy days happy with that oh. um, still haven't painted those other doors though uh, but we're nearly done we're nearly done um, it's good really because this has taken me two seasons of Game of Thrones to make this part of the building so from that point of view uh, nearly done N not this this didn't take two seasons of Game of Thrones this took like um the episode of the, the Battle of Blackwater Bay or whatever it is, you know, where the, the ships and the green fire and the stuff and, the, and that kind of stuff. Good. Um, yeah, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. I'm going to see if I can make a little gate or I'm going to paint this. See you in a minute. And we are done. Uh, I want to say done. Um, it's again another one of those bits of scenery where you could keep going and going and going. But because this is a build for somebody else, uh, I reined it in a little bit. Um, because I, I don't know how it's going to look on Alex's table. Um, so I haven't gone for mega washes of, of, and griming it up in case he doesn't want to go grim dark. Um, I am going to add a few um, tufts. 
grassy tufts and that kind of thing to it, but on the whole, check this out. Well, it's a big, imposing building, actually, tall. I mean, it, it's not really tall like a lot of towers. This fact, it's, it's quite wide and squat, but um, it's a bank. I wanted it to look really kind of solid, and uh, uh, I wanted it to have that kind of... Um, <sighs> secure kind of nature but it also is a fantasy building so it needs to have whimsy it's a little while since you've had one of those um so we've got this this completely really impractical walkway around the outside and the stone bit here um which is all right you can get 30 40 millimeter bases on it there's enough space to put the big boys Let's put a beaver out here <coughs> up there he works all right although beaver's gonna have real difficulty getting inside that door mind you but um that's all. That's, that's fine. There are rules in the game for that. Um, whereas standing outside the front doors of the bank, well, um, still looks quite good. Although massive beasts wouldn't have too much difficulty getting up onto the the uh, um, the balcony, I suppose. Now, I did say from the start that I was reckon that Daniel, uh, Daniel, fuck's sake, I did say actually. Well, no, no, it's fine. From the start, I did say Daniel. I did, I did, but I actually meant to say Alex, kind of. Um, I did say right from the get-go that um, if Alex wanted, he could change the model on, on, this, on the rock uh, to be, you know, something else. He could build a watchtower or something else. But actually, as I said earlier, the design kind of took over and the way it kind of like it worked out... It could easily be a watchtower on a rock already. It could easily be some kind of minor fortification. So that works really, really nicely. So we've got, what have we got then? Let's just recap. We've got, um, starting from the bottom, let's take it apart into its constituent parts. Uh, from the bottom then, we have the northern rock itself oh, aye. and what I've now done is I've added in oh, I'll take the staircase out for a minute um, you can now see that there is a set of railings in there metal that splits up the uh, vault on this side this is all completely secure and on this side there's the ridiculous doorway that goes through and out there I think my mate um, Paul Grace the, the, what this needs is a bush over it it does really, it needs a tree or a bush or something to hide that kind of exit so it's not completely obvious. <coughs> um, that might be something that Alex wants to add himself. I don't know what kind of games he's got in mind for it. So, um, or I might supply a bush to go with that. I think it's quite a cool idea. Very five go mad in North Inver, then, you know, they go over there, pull the branch three times, and the bush falls down, and bloody hell, there's a door behind it, and I wonder where that goes. Um, so, this, uh, the, the rock which we built last time, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it needs uh, uh, a little bit of flock on it, maybe in places with some tufts of grass and stuff, uh, which I'll, I'll have a go at doing. Um, but uh, and then on top of that, then we've then got the tower, which has been the main part of the build in this video of the bank itself. Uh, that started with where are we? The ground floor. Here's the ground floor of the bank uh, with the balcony added onto the outside of that quite nicely. Um, I didn't put this chimney in in the end um, only because <clears throat> more than anything else I'm very conscious of the fact that I often overfill models with stuff um, and what's crucial is the fact that this actually ends up with enough space in it to play in. so I haven't put any counters in or anything else if it was mine I'd fill it up with all kinds of gunk but what I really want to do is make sure there's enough room in there for play it will be very very easy for the owner of this to uh, make a, a counter or use counters from bar counters or other kind of things from uh, say mantic terrain crates in that that provides a perfectly good one um, but again I don't want to restrict what goes on in here by sticking stiff stuff in stiff stuff um, you definitely make it sure it's one thing or another whereas you leaving this big space open then it just becomes um, scatter terrain you you can use in there to define bank or watchtower or guard room or whatever um, then there's the portcullis uh, here Ping. Uh, that leads into essentially this little square room here which I've just left black on the floor um, this is where the staircase goes down to the uh, uh, vault and what I haven't done is um, cut it out I could easily have cut it out at the bottom but then actually this model is quite neat it could be used elsewhere 
doesn't have to be used on top of the rock. So from that point of view, um, I've left it completely solid. It's black, so we just know we can go down there. So that just sits on top of the rock. There's no cunning way of making it kind of stay attached. It just sits there. Covers up the hole completely. It's got this nice funky angle at the back here that goes across here. That's cool. Um, and then I made the first floor, um, which again, is uh, it's got the stairwell in it. Uh, there's no door in this one here. I haven't bothered putting a door in here. Um, uh, and then again, this is one large room, so it could be the bank manager's office. It could be the second floor of the watchtower. Really like this model. It could be. It's really cool. I mean, this it's really evocative. Um, the, the the level of whimsy. Yeah, not too sure. It hasn't got twisty, turny bits and kind of like cool tiled roofs and that kind of thing, which is how I achieve some of that kind of like fantasy wackiness. It's a solid, solid building. But um, it would be, I mean, this in the middle of a table, if this was being attacked or stormed or whatever else, um, I think would be a, a, a terrific thing to play against. Really hard to get into. I think um, uh, bank robbing kind of like scenarios might need to start with the bank robbers actually in the bank trying to get out to be quite honest um but that sits nicely on top and the way i've, I've made the um uh the walkway go around the edge you can see it's just raised higher than the actual lip of the wall which means when the first floor sits on it it sits inside that walkway and that holds it that holds it firm enough to hold it in place and not get jogged around which is quite nice so that sits then on top of me uh, the rock. Let's move that back there so we can see that. Oops, fucking workshop falling apart. Um, there we are. That's now sitting on the on the the, the rock. And then the lid. <coughs> Simple square stone on the top. One little um, trap door that goes over the stairwell. And that slots right down on top of. The tower so that's not going to fall off by accident either and there we have it our, our solid bank on the rock the northern rock bank uh yeah i'm really pleased with it i hope alex is going to be too because uh it's rather wicked now what i need to do is kind of like get some footage of just the video around it that kind of thing we'll have to see what we can work out there hmm yeah okay Ooh, nurse. So, <clears throat> there we have it then, um, Northern Rock, Burroughs and Badgers, Patreon build, done, a, a bank for B&B, &B. Um, uh, but because I don't want it just to be used for bank raids, because I think that would limit the amount of use it gets on the table, I have deliberately made it so it could be used for a whole bunch of other things and different objectives as well, so Alex, uh, thanks for your great ideas. Uh, you've sent me several over the time you've been one of my patrons, um, and I'm really pleased I've been able to make this one for you. Oh, did I mention that this was a, a Patreon build? I might have done. Um, if you fancy uh, a piece of uh, Magathea Builder World scenery, and I, I do kind of every now and then do stuff for commission, if you're interested in just commissioning me to make your scenery, um, DM me on my, um, uh, uh, what's it called, Facebook page, or that kind of thing. Uh, come find me and, and send me a message. But otherwise, or on Patreon, you could just join my Patreon and then you could get stand a chance of getting a piece of scenery for free. Um, uh, where's, what's my Patreon, you ask? I hear, because you haven't heard it at all yet, have you? It's um, uh, uh, patreon.com slash Magrathia Builder World. Uh, for the price of a cup of coffee every month, you stand a chance to enter a competition for several times a year uh, where you could probably, possibly, maybe, if you come up with a cool idea, win a piece of scenery made by me. Um, I'm so behind. This was the one from Christmas. Um... We need to have a competition that I haven't really kind of set about doing. So um, if you're a patron and you're watching this video and you got to the end uh, and the April competition, now it's nearly the end of May, uh, is up and running. Um, I am going to post this video um, before Friday the 26th of May. I'm then going to Whitby Castle for nine days. No, it's not a bloody castle, is it? What is it? It's an abbey. I go to Whitby Abbey for nine days uh, to be a pirate. Arr, uh, to do my real job. My real job's a pirate. I'm a bloody pirate, me. Ah, um, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so, um, um, the Patreon competition then is going to run from uh, now 
now that this video's live until I get back from Whitby, which is the, I don't know, fucking first weekend in June. Um, all you got to do is uh, come up with an idea for a piece of scenery that you would like uh, made me to make for you. It's got to be 12 inches, can't be bigger than 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, roughly speaking. I mean, a bit of tolerance, but yeah, I mean, that's the plan. Um, that way there, it could be made and um, built fairly easy and straightforwardly. Um, it could be for any game system you like, any tabletop system you like, or if you fancy a book nook, hey, if you know somebody, a patron wants a book nook made for them, that's a different thing altogether. Ask me, I might be able to do book nooks. I don't know. Um, just something you would have seen from my back catalogue of videos. Um, and that way there, you stand a chance of doing that. So I, I love a challenge. I love different kind of games. So, um, it, you know, I've made quite a few B&B &B things recently, and I know many, many of you are B&B &B players and fans. So, uh, statistically speaking, there are going to be a number of Patreon builds that are B&B &B builds, but it doesn't always have to be that. What have we built stuff for? We have built stuff for Fallout, uh, Necromunda, um, Ash Waste, that kind of thing, um, and uh, yeah, and other bits and pieces too. So from that point of view, if you fancy a Stargrave build or a Frostgrave build or um, a Just Dread build or a Star Wars build or you know, or a World War Two build or you know something historical. Um, Come up with some ideas and let me know. So, I look forward to seeing those. If you are not one of my patrons and you don't want to pay, be a patron, that's absolutely fine. Blimey, it's not for everybody. I'm still stacking people to do it, to be quite honest. Um, if you uh, uh, have enjoyed what I've done with this model and you, you'd like to make it, you know, tell me one way or another, please leave comments down below. If you think I could have done something different or it's not whimsical enough or it's too whimsical for you, two more. Um, then please do leave comments down below. If you've only just started watching my videos, make sure you click subscribe and like and all that kind of stuff. And uh, um, I don't know what I'm going to be building next. I think I might be doing something Star Warsy again. Um, and then, and then when I get some Judge Dread figures back painted, because uh, I a lovely chap, Hi uh, Meister, who is painting Judge Dread figures for me. I'm going to do some Judge Dread stuff. But I've got a number of ideas for B and B that I want to crack on with as well. Oh, it's just too much, too much, and uh, uh, too many ideas, and not enough to Timmy, frankly, which is kind of hard to believe considering the size of me. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> who knows what it's going to be. I've got to go and be a pirate for the next nine days or so. So, from that point of view, I'm not going to be building anything for a little while anyway. I might take my sketchbook with me and sit and sketch of an evening, though. At Whitby Abbey, the ruins on the north coast of England, vampires and all that. Who knows how I might be inspired. Anyway, I rambled enough at the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching Magrathea Builder Worlds, and I will see you next time. Arr.